Now, what happens in a parallel program? So I want to execute not one stream, but multiple streams. I want to have multiple code flows. So first of all, one program counter doesn't do the job for me. If I have multiple execution flows, so I'll call these execution flows as threads. Right, if I have multiple threads, I want each thread to be able to execute its own code. Right? So let's come back here, right? So which of these all these segments do you think is required to be created separately for each thread, for each execution stream? So different execution streams, different threads could be doing different things altogether. One could be computing a factorial, the other could be computing a square root and so on, right? First of all, the code segment, it can be the same. The same code is loaded. They might be pointing to different locations. Their respective program counters might be pointing to different locations, right? The data segment, that's global data shared by all the threads. BSS, that is also global data shared by all the threads. Heap is dynamically allocated data. The allocation and release of that data, all of that is controlled by calls to malloc and free. So they can also be shared by all the threads. So what is the problem? The problem is the stack. Because each thread is executing its own function, right? It's, it's executing its own code flow. It's invoking its own set of functions. I cannot combine all of these into the same stack. I cannot put them all in the same stack. What will happen if I jumble them up in the same stack? The frames will be interleaved, right? And then it doesn't make any sense. When I release one frame, where do I go back? Where does the previous frame start from? I have to go look it up. I mean, there's no sense in trying to maintain all these stack frames of different threads in the same stack, right? So each thread has its own stack. And so on. OK? So now it, it can keep track of its own frames. It can keep track of its own code flow. Where is it supposed to come back? And whatever function is executed by one thread, it keeps track of the variables that are defined inside that function within its own stack. Right? That's not shared with other threads. Doesn't make sense. So threads are essentially different execution streams, which can execute independently. Okay. How are threads scheduled by the operating system? How do they execute on the processor? So most operating systems are multitasking. That means that they can execute multiple tasks together. Let's say that there is program one, program two, so there are multiple codes that are executing, or these could be threads as well. Suppose that there is only a single processor, or let's just call it thread. So there is thread one that is executing, there is thread two that is executing, and so on, right? So what it can do is, it can schedule thread one for some period of time. It's called a time slice. After that time slice, it can throw out thread one and schedule thread two. Okay? Not when it's completed. So it might allocate it for short periods of time. If you, you open up a browser window and you fire three different requests. So all of them seem to be running in parallel, right? But how are they running in parallel on a single processor architecture? On the processor, they are being scheduled one at a time. There are several ways in which it figures out which thread should be scheduled. So it maintains a ready queue where it has, uh, let's say, thread one, thread two. It keeps track of which threads are ready to be scheduled, right? And if, if thread one is ready to be scheduled, it basically allocates the processor to thread one, right? Whichever is at the head of the queue. So the thread gets to execute on the processor for some period of time, right? That is called a time slice. That is determined by the operating system. And once that time slice is done, it throws this thread out, right? It puts it at the end of the queue and schedules the next thread. There are even priorities and all that stuff, so we'll not get into that. The operating system determines which thread is supposed to be scheduled next. And one simplest way of maintaining it is just a ready queue with round robin scheduling. Another case where the thread may get scheduled out is, it's, it's not just purely based on time slice. If the thread does some blocking operation, so what is the blocking operation? So if it does some file system access, if it tries to read a file, okay, 
Now getting data from a file is very, very expensive. Okay, it takes uh, several milliseconds to actually get it. So a processor doesn't sit idle during that time. So what does it do? It just picks up that thread and puts it somewhere else, right? So there are even queues maintained for all devices that who's trying to read disk and so on. So we'll not get into all that stuff. But essentially it basically schedules it out of the CPU if it makes a call, a blocking call. Similarly, if it makes an HTTP request to some website, right? Now it, it's performing an IO operation, a network operation is being performed. So the moment it performs that IO operation, it schedules it out. So what happens? The request is gone. The HTTP request has gone out to the server, right? It's going to take some time for it to come back. In the meanwhile, it will pick up thread two and schedule it, give the CPU resources to that. Thread two is going to execute. Maybe it makes uh, a request to another HTTP server, right? So that request again, an IO will be performed. Again, it will be scheduled out, right? A third thread comes, it makes another HTTP request. It will be scheduled out. All operations which are very, very expensive and the CPU does not have anything to do with it because when you've made a server request, now the server has to respond back. God knows when it's gonna come back. There's no point to waste your CPU resources waiting for that request to come back. Similarly, if you've made a disk access, there's no point waiting for the disk to send back the data. It might take very long for it to come back. So the CPU does not sit idle. It just schedules the next thread, which is there. Allocates the CPU resources to the next thread. And if a thread is just doing a lot of computation and not making any blocking calls to disk, IO, in that case, it will throw it out after it completes its time slice. So it has this notion of time slice. And if the thread doesn't give up, the CPU in that time, it will schedule it out, put it at the end of the queue. All right, so that is multitasking.